I feel like I've known a lot of people who are engineers and they tend to use pens and they're very, very good at what they do. When someone uses a pen versus a pencil, I kind of think it indicates that they're not gonna mess up because you can't really erase with a pen, but you can scratch stuff out. This is the nicest pen I currently own and I like it. I'll leave a link in the description. So I tried to do some engineering problems from this book. This book is awesome. It's got so much math in it and I almost did not buy it. What happened was I went to a local thrift shop a few weeks ago and all the hardcover books were a dollar. And I was looking for math books and I thought, well, it's electrical engineering, so maybe it has some math in it, right? And it does. This book completely blew me away. There is a ton of math in here and there is a ton of other topics, electrical engineering topics. This is a serious book. This is the book that electrical engineers used in 1983 to study for what's called the PE examination. And I'm pretty sure in order to become a professional engineer in the United States, you have to take this exam. So this is serious and you can tell this is a serious book because it is incredibly dense. It has so much information. So back to the pen, before I show you the book, I just wanna talk a little bit more about this pen because I tried to do a problem using this pen. And this was an example in the book. And you can see I ended up scratching stuff out. And then to make things worse, I got a different answer than the book did. And I put it in my calculator so I know it's right, but I guess engineers do make mistakes. There's also a couple other typos in this book. Here is the inside cover, Electrical Engineering Review Manual, 4th edition, a complete review course for the PE examination for electrical engineers. There's the copyright 1983. It's definitely been a while. And I'm just briefly going to go through the topics and I want you to notice something as I go through each section. Notice how small the sections are. So real numbers, complex numbers, algebra. So it goes quickly from one page to the other, very, very quickly. In other words, it's extremely dense. It's just filled with knowledge. Here's some more of the topics. And I don't really know a lot about electrical engineering. So I don't know like how many courses you would have to take in order to basically see all of the content that's in this book but it seems extremely overwhelming. Like there is a lot of material in this book. Digital logic, control systems. There's some differential equations in here. There's Fourier analysis. It's all kinds of really cool stuff. The book starts from the very basics when it comes to mathematics. It talks about real numbers and complex numbers, things that you're probably already familiar with. If you turn the page, we're already talking trigonometry. So it's a pretty big leap from a very gentle introduction. And now you can see how dense it starts to become. It talks about algebra and the quadratic equation. Then it jumps to exponentiation, then partial fraction expansion. Almost missed it, it also talks about logarithms. Then it goes on and talks about more trig identities. And you see, it's just more and more math and it's really kind of scattered. I think what they're doing is just introducing the math that you actually need to solve the actual engineering problems. On the next pages, we're already into calculus, integral calculus, differential calculus, differential equations, even higher order differential equations. And they do give examples. Here they talk about Fourier analysis. It says a periodic function with a period t can be represented by the Fourier series given an equation 1.86. And then it gives you the formulas for the Fourier coefficients. Then they actually do an example where they find a Fourier series for a wave and the authors go through and show quite a bit of work. And then here is the infinite Fourier series, which approximates the original square wave. Here's a nice table of Laplace transforms that's in the book. This is pretty cool, and this is something that you see if you take a differential equations class. Depending on the class you take and the book you use and how much you cover, you may see some of these formulas, you may see other formulas, it just really, really varies, but it's pretty cool that they give you, I guess, the ones that you really need uh, here in this book. This book is actually really well made. Like physically, it's very well put together. I feel like an engineer assembled this book one page at a time. I just got to give it a whiff. 
Oh, what an amazing book. So there's something really weird about this book. So check this out. I'm going to turn the page and look. Reserved for future use. So what's happening there, right? Is it like they have to reserve a page? Perhaps when they update the edition, something will go here. Can they not just add more pages? It's very, very strange that they did that. Here they do it again on the section which covers digital logic. It says reserved for future use. Really weird. And I guess if you're really struggling, you can always buy more supplements from them. Please rush me the review materials I have checked. I understand any item may be returned for a full refund within 30 days. I have provided my bank card number as method of payment and I authorize you to charge your current prices against my account. So I guess you just mail this in and give them your number and they will charge the current prices, whatever they are, for these books. So it's kind of weird because you don't know how much these things cost. But I guess if you need study materials, maybe this maybe this was one of the few places to go back in 1983. This is well before the internet. I guess if you want to know what the prices are, you can also request that. So that's pretty cool. Please send me descriptions and prices of all available EIT and PE review books. I understand there will be no obligation. Oh, what's this? A friend of mine is taking the exam too. Send additional literature too. Cool. And this one is, I disagree. <laughs> I think there is an error on page. Here's the way I think it should be. Yeah, and I found an error already. I found that small error. It was off by one decimal place on a problem I was doing. And I thought, wow, no, not an engineering book. I really wonder how many classes you would have to take in college to cover all of the material in this book because I feel like there is just so much here. If someone knows, please leave a comment in the comment section. Here you see they are working with second order differential equations and Laplace transforms. So this is on the section which covers state variable representation. I don't know if it's even possible to find this book because it's such an old book and I don't know if this was like a standard book that was used to prepare for the PE, but if I can find it or one that's very comparable, I'll try to leave a link in the description. Yet another one of those mysterious pages, rotating machines reserved for future use. This is on the chapter on linear amplifiers. Look at the nomenclature. Wow. All kinds of variables, right? So much stuff. And this is just one chapter. And there's a few more here. Yeah, DD, drain supply, wow. Here we can see some hyperbolic functions. When A is the complex number, A plus JB. Yeah, so engineers, instead of using the letter lowercase i for the imaginary unit, they used J, which is really quite interesting. Some more equations here. I don't know, for some reason this book just kind of like makes you want to do math because it's got all of these like weird equations you know especially if you've never seen them before you open a book like this and you're like what is going on here and then when you start reading it you say oh hey i know what's going on they're just you know they're doing that but there's a lot here there is so much here so that's it i just wanted to make a video to show you this book that i got at a thrift shop i thought it was really really cool and i'm really glad i bought it i almost didn't buy it because it's an electrical engineering book and so I didn't think it would have that much math in it, but I remember I used to have friends who were electrical engineers when I was in college, and they were always working on like Laplace transforms, and they were doing things that I hadn't even seen in my math classes. So yeah, I think you learn a lot of math when you study electrical engineering, it seems. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and as always, uh, if you are not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Good luck, and take care.